This week, we stepped into a new year, and for most persons, this is a time for setting new goals or even improving old ones, like dieting, exercise, and making more money. Whatever your New Year's resolution, know that whatever the mind can conceive, you can achieve. This is Jamaica Magazine, and I'm Theodore Henry. On today's episode, we take a little trod across the island, so stay with us, and who knows what you may discover. Action your prosperity. Action your progress. Associate with the projects that are improving the quality of your life. Watch how the Office of the Prime Minister facilitated that in 2018. That's the 2018 Review of Activities in the Office of the Prime Minister, right here on this station. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica Statin has confirmed that the economy grew by 1.8% in the third quarter of 2018 when compared to the similar period in 2017. The output for July to September was also a 1.1% improvement over the previous quarter of the last calendar year. This was as a result of increases in both the services and goods producing industries. Government has intensified the implementation of its security strategy, Plan Secure Jamaica, with Colonel Roderick Williams from the Jamaica Defense Force assigned to coordinate this phase of the plan within the Office of the National Security Advisor. The news comes after Prime Minister Andrew Holness chaired a series of consultations with the security chiefs this week. We will be coming to, to Parliament um, closer to the budget because Plan Secure Jamaica has to be funded. It is, uh, for the first time, we have costed a, a plan and we will come to the public. And we will be seeking stakeholder support to execute the plan. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Andrew Holness and leader of the opposition, Dr. Peter Phillips, held private discussions at Vale Royal this week to discuss the country's crime situation. A meeting of teams from the government and opposition will follow next Monday, January 7. On Thursday, the Ministry of Health announced the allocation of an additional $250 million to contain the current dengue fever outbreak. This follows confirmation that 123 cases were reported in December 2018. This exceeds the outbreak threshold of 96 cases. So 96 cases for the month of December. And in this case, this last December, we had 123. This is the first month in the 2018 calendar in which the number of cases exceeded the outbreak threshold. This season has been a more active season than last year. And we have been observing and monitoring the numbers and the increases with each month. But clearly, by the clinical standards, could only claim an epidemic once the threshold is surpassed. A batch of 299 farm workers left the island for Canada on January 3 and 4 under the Labour and Social Security Ministry's Overseas Employment Programme. 41 of them are travelling on the programme for the first time as the Ministry reports that the number of Jamaicans getting work under the initiative is growing. During the 2018 season, a total of 16,681 Jamaicans were placed in employment opportunities in Canada and the United States under the Ministry's Overseas Employment Programme. This represents an increase of 703 workers compared to the 2017 season. Government has gazetted two ministerial orders that provide the regulatory framework to support the January 1 ban on single-use plastic bags of a particular dimension, plastic straws and polystyrene products. The orders will be enforced, obviously by a number of regulatory agencies working together and independently. Government is seeking to add mini-pumper fire engines to the fleet of the Jamaica Fire Brigade's emergency department. The brigade has been invited by this company to visit Canada to have a look at some of those units. And once the brigade agrees that these units can assist 
in their fighting capabilities, I will make the necessary requests for the funding to secure some of these trucks to complement the work of the Jamaica Fire Brigade. The local government minister made the announcement as he officially opened the Montego Bay Fireboat Station in St. James and handed over two new fire trucks. The new station will be manned by 34 firefighters. The National Water Commission is instituting a series of scheduled supply arrangements to more evenly distribute water across the corporate area as breaks on its pipelines and other issues severely reduce the supply to customers. We are not going to be able to serve every single customer at the daytime at the level that every single customer wants under these circumstances. But what we are ensuring to do is to at least provide you with an improved service during a particular period. I'm also very much aware that some customers would rather have water during the day rather than at night. I apologize and seek your indulgence and patience while we work to resolve the major issue. And finally, the Ministry of Sport is negotiating with China to finalize plans to complement the current three-year technical agreement on sport between both countries. This was disclosed by Portfolio Minister Olivia Grange during a news conference to commence year two of the Jamaica-China Technical Assistance Project on Sport. Those negotiations include, one, training of other teams in China, possibly to include winter sports teams, field events athletes, particularly in the throws, triathletes, water polo. And those were some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. By now you would have heard that there is a ban in place on single-use plastic bags. This is part of efforts by the government to reduce the use of plastic products and secure environmental sustainability. You know what also helps? Recycling. Learn more in this feature. Recycling, the process by which used materials are converted into new usable products. One of those commonly recycled materials is the plastic bottle. It's often used to produce a number of products, from clothing to furniture and even other bottles. But did you know that bottles can be repurposed into a greenhouse? Well, a team from the Richmond Park Primary School in Clarendon not only built a greenhouse, but also created an irrigation system along the way. The JCCP and the UNDP um, involved us into a project in ways how we can sustain the environment. So our school, we came up with the idea of recycling plastic bottles. And because we are in the farming, our school is in the 4-H club, we decided to do the greenhouse and plant crops inside of it. We use plastic bottles a lot in our schools and our surroundings and we see them all over the place so we and the students we came together with an idea to collect all the plastic bottles in our communities and then we bring them back to our school and then we wash them and then we started to build a greenhouse. This size it took us one week, exactly one week. Inside we have six types of drip irrigation system. We have the cone dripper, where we put the plant inside, of, we cut the, the liter bottle and put the, the plant inside of it. And the water is absorbed by the absorbent cord into the, the soil that, is, that the, the plant can get um, the water and the nutrients also. And we have the hose dripper, when the water um, runs off the roof and catches into the bucket, it leads to the hose and it water the plants also. And we have the plant hangers and the syrup bottle um, self-watering system where the water drips from one bottle to the next until it water all the plants. So you don't have to go every day to water plants. The bottles are there, it's a self-watering system. All you have to do is to pour some water inside the bottles. The greenhouse was a hit at the 66th staging of the Denby Agricultural Show in Clarendon and caught the attention of several government ministers one of whom was a minister without portfolio in the agriculture ministry, J.C. Hutchinson, who indicated that this project was in line with something he had been advocating for. What I've been speaking mainly about is the hydroponics, which part of what you see there is the hydroponics where you have the water coming through 
the plastic bottles to filter to the plants. And also, you could have aquaponics also where you have the fish below, and that filters through the plants, through the plastic bottles, and come back out. Inside there is cooler than outside here, and I think if we can have some of these going, it might suit quite a number of persons who might think of setting up house. Reduce, reuse, recycle. The use of plastic bottles in the agricultural sector is definitely becoming a thing. So give it a try. Start a backyard garden and help to rid the country of these pollutants. We all can play our part in helping to make the country a cleaner place and even help to boost the economy. Now to that little trip across the island that I promised. How about we head north, around the bends of the scenic fern gully, to discover the garden parish. See what scintillating St. Anne has to offer. It was at this part of our rock back in 1494 that Columbus first set sights on Jamaica, hence the name Discovery Bay. The new occupiers of the land mimicked the locals and stayed on the coastline, creating Sevilla La Nueva. We started with a history lesson, so please indulge me as I take you on a tour of scintillating St. Anne. Before the North-South Highway made it possible to travel from Kingston to St. Anne in 50 minutes, you had this road. Though not as popular as before, the Mount Russell Bypass is still a viable route to get to St. Anne. And between you and me, this is the more scenic route to the Garden Parish. Rest stop at Fate's Pen is all you'll need to refuel on your way to Monique. It's home to two prominent training institutions, both of which have a shared history. It may not look like much now, since it was raised by fire in 2010. But this building was a mainstay around these parts. Built in 1890, the Monique Hotel was a rest stop for visitors to the Jamaican Great Exhibition of 1891. By World War II, it was taken over by the military, and in 1956, it became a college that also bore the name of the town. The old hotel is also linked to another location that's just off the main road, round the bend, at a place called Swamp. I remember hearing from my late mother, who used to come down here in the 1930s, long before I was born, and she would go and water ski on the Manigue Lakes. I mean, that's how high the water was in those days, and Manigue was in fact a tourism center for Jamaica in those days. They would have tours from the hotel, which is now the, the college, and they'd go to the Manigue Lakes and water ski. In 2005, the lake swelled and engulfed parts of the community. Today, only two pools remain to tell the story of what happened back then, and life has seemingly returned to normal. Further down the road, round the bend, is Blue Hole at Riverhead in the parish. You can take a dip, pull off on its banks, or visit the nearby garden over the bridge. But be careful, this serene pool is 60 feet deep. 
This Blue Hole River is said to be the starting point of the White River. Locals say the water flows underground and reappear on the coast in Ocherius. We get back on the main road and head to Walkerswood, where Bromley Pen is located. This 18th century beauty is made of wood with cut stone foundation and has a wraparound veranda and sash windows. It's a private property, so we asked and were granted a tour by its owner. Bromley was built, I believe, around the 1720s. And um, it's been converted over the years um, by different owners. My great-grandfather bought it in the, they say in the 1890s. He was a banana man from St. Mary, but he went into cattle. And it's been a cattle property. And, uh, not a great house. It's historically, they're all called pens. A lot of people don't want to have their house called a pen. Bromley was really just a little two bedroom house. And it's just been added on to. The veranda you see behind me was put on by my great grandfather. But um, so we still have cattle here. But we started in the 70s working with Caribbean foods, the direct seasoning business. Recently, we have turned Bromley into a yoga retreat. become very popular and uh, we run yoga retreats from Thanksgiving time in America through until about May, June, the close down of hurricane season. Here at Walker's Wood we produce jams, jellies and of course our traditional jerk seasoning. We have Sauces, barbecue sauces, um, savory sauces, jerk sauces. We could not come to St. Anne without visiting Fern Gully. This three mile stretch is home to over 300 species of fern many of which are endemic to the island. If you follow the road, you'll get to Ocho Rios, the island's tourism mecca. There's lots to do, so be sure you go out there and enjoy this amazing parish. Cyber safety is an important issue, and everyone should be informed on how to use technology responsibly. With this in mind, the Ministry of Science and Technology embarked on a cyber safe roadshow this past year. Let's go west now for the Montego Bay leg. All Jamaicans should use the internet and all of the other resources available online in a meaningful way. It is with this notion that the government embarked on a series of activities to raise awareness about the dangers in cyberspace this past October, one of which was a cyber-safe roadshow in Montego Bay, St. James. The Ministry of Science and Technology! Hey, hey, ready, ready, over here, how is it? Hey, 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 what, what, what? The international theme of Cybersecurity Awareness Month was cybersecurity or shared responsibility, and the local public awareness campaign theme has been Think Before You Click. Representatives from the Cyber Incident Response Team, CERT, eLearning Jamaica Limited, Universal Service Fund, USF, and the Jamaica Constabulary Force were out on the town interacting with the residents. The day was filled with activities, prizes and surprises for everyone, but throughout the fun and games, the message was crystal clear. Don't give away, give away your password. Not even to your friends. Not even your partner. Which one are the password? For your phone. Phone alone? For your computer. So like, oh, um, like, oh, me want to draw one five grand and, um, 
me really can't go down to the machine. Me can't just give me cousin. No, not, no, me no, cousin don't give away your sis, pain. Me cousin don't give away your pain. Me cousin and sister, Pitney, they care. No, don't do it. Eh? I know you trust them. I yeah. know them is family. Yes. But uh, you're putting yourself at risk. Wow. The issue isn't about giving others access to your online and bank accounts. It goes further to the simple things you do, such as clicking a download link on your computer or phone. Before you click on a link that a friend or anyone has shared with you for a video or photos, think about it first. Take a look at that link. If it looks suspicious, do not click it. There is so much that we do online that we we put ourselves at risk to be attacked, to have our data stolen. And the message that we are leaving is be conscious about what you do online. Do not overshare. Do not download applications that ask for personal information. Be present with what you're doing online. Use strong passwords and always be conscious of what you do. The Universal Service Fund is a partner on the campaign. The USF has established several free public Wi-Fi areas across the island, but the agency wants residents to use them with caution. The thing with public Wi-Fi is when you access the internet, it's like being in your home and opening your door to go outside and turning on your lights. You have no control over who is able to see into your house or who may be able to access your home unless you put the necessary safeguards in place. So it's all about, yes, using the internet, using public Wi-Fi, because of course it's amazing, especially when it's free. But we must always be cognizant of the risks associated and of course be safe whenever we go online. Cybersecurity is not just an October thing. It's a continuous learning process for you to know how to protect yourself online. So the next time you go online or even before you download that link on your phone, make sure you think before you click. I can just imagine what some of you guys will be thinking while you drink the liquor Saturday soup today. Holiday done, and just like that, you're free paper bun. This, of course, means that your free time is up, and it's time to return to school or go back to work. So go on, savor the soup, because come Monday morning, you're free paper bun. The Jamaica Customs Agency has been engaging its customers at the community level, making a number of stops across the island. Since our last feature took us to the western end of the island, let's stay there a bit and see how the JCA engaged its stakeholders in Westmoreland. After making our debut visit to the town of Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth, then landing in the historic town of Spanish Town, St. Catherine, then moving across the eastern parish of Portland, into the town of Port Antonio, then to the garden parish of St. Anne in Ocho Rios. The Jamaica Customs Agency team is pleased to make our fifth stop in the serene parish of Westmoreland. Apart from it being the first for the new financial year, although fifth in the overall engagement sessions, it is actually the, uh, the session where we invited persons with disabilities specifically. And we actually had two interpreters today with us. Also, we are able to do live streaming and this allowed persons across the length and breadth of Jamaica to see and hear what was going on and in addition, persons in the diaspora to hear what is happening straight from the source. At the Westmoreland engagement, the JCA provided pertinent information about customs clearance procedures and goods that are restricted or prohibited. Prohibited goods are those that should not be imported into the country at any time, while restricted goods can only be imported if a permit is obtained. And we're looking at items such as possibly meats, 
I just said the apples that persons may try to, to, to bring in when they're coming into the countries, the turkeys during the Christmas season, other dangerous drugs, the cocaine, and the firearm and ammunition. Goods may be inferior. Persons mentioned earlier about counterfeit cigarettes, the rum, right? So we're looking at things like these. We have other counterfeit items as well. I mean, you'd have seen clothes, shoes, the watches, the headphones, and so forth that's been on the market. The JCA continued to engage its partners on its CMC initiative. And for this leg of the journey, the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, JIPO, came on board and provided information on trademarks and intellectual property rights. So I want to make an appeal to you to be careful about what you purchase. Look at the, the trademarks to make sure that it's a genuine item you're buying because if you buy counterfeit goods, you are um, inadvertently feeding organized crime. There is real enforcement behind it. There are real consequences behind it. And we want to make sure that we not only value our intellectual property rights, but we recognize the value of others. As the agency continues to tackle the issue of corruption through public education, residents learned ways in which customers contribute to this practice and the measures the JCA is taking to combat this challenge. So what is it they're cutting your goods by half or you're providing fraudulent invoices just so that you can get your goods under value. That is a form of non-compliance, which is also a form of corruption and borders on crime. So honest and effective leadership and oversight, proper auditing, clear rules on ethical behavior, transparent procedures, pre-employee and continuous screening, that's our vetting, sensitization sessions and workshop like we're doing here now, risk management, anti-corruption strategies, and our penalty system. The audience also got an opportunity to provide feedback. Is customs aware of the frustration that customers go to at the Montego Bay port? And is anything being done to alleviate that frustration? We understand, but until the port is expanded, and that is an initiative that has to be taken by the Port Authority of Jamaica, not customs. It's a private entity. What if when you go and clear a barrel and when you reach home, you realize it was hacking to? Usually for you to report something missing, it would have to be discovered right there and then when the items are being examined and the report made so that, you know, things can be investigated. And of course, residents were thoroughly entertained by the Hartford folk and cultural group. <laughs> As the Jamaica Customs Agency continues its journey across the island, stay tuned, listen in, keep your ears to the ground, because the next stop may just be in your town. In 2018, the public healthcare sector continued to chart a dynamic and transformative path through physical infrastructure and equipment upgrades and the implementation of best practices to ensure the optimum health of the population. I think we are on the right track in terms of where we need to go to cater to the needs of our population. Catch our review of the Ministry of Health in 2018, coming in Jamaica Magazine on Monday, January 14, 2019. Looks like we've run out of gas, aka time, for today. I certainly hope that you enjoyed the ride. Send us your feedback at jis.gov.jm. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter to keep up with all the latest happenings. I'm Theodore Henry, and take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.